Hi guys, thanks for joining me on Making with Marilyn. On today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these really super, super simple to design earrings in Cricut Design Space, and then I cut them out of suede leather. I really like suede, but I haven't ever used it before with my Cricut. So today I gave it a try. I had two fails, and then my third attempt was a success. So before you follow along with me, before you do any of the work, watch until the end so that you see what I did that didn't work and what I did that did work. Now for this project, I used some suede that I got at Hobby Lobby. This came in one of their remnant packs. They have suede remnant packs and I have probably five or six colors of this suede. So I was really interested in starting to work with it. I used my strong grip mat. I used some strong grip transfer tape to hold my suede down to the mat. I used some super hold scotch tape to tape over the top of the leather to also hold it down just a little bit more support. I used my brayer, used my hole punch, some scissors, a little bit of this E6000. It's not necessary, but I used it. And then to put my hardware in, I used my pliers, my needle nose pliers, this little jump ring tool. I used kind of a blackened metal for my earrings. And then lastly, you'll see that I start with my rotary blade. That's what the Cricut directed me to use for suede. And that didn't work. And then I added more pressure and it didn't work. Eventually I chose a whole new setting and I used my knife blade. And that finally worked. So if you want to do this project, gather your things, but like I said, wait until the end so that you see what works successfully. Now, if you like my video or find anything in it inspirational or helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see what I'll be working on in the future, hit the subscribe button. If you also tap the bell, YouTube should notify you when I upload new content. Thanks again for joining me. Now let's get started. On today's video, I'm going to do a really quick, fast pair of earrings. Now, I've never made these earrings before, so we're doing it for the first time together. Hopefully they turn out okay. I have seen them online, and so I just wanted to give it a shot. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on shapes, and then I'm going to click on square, so that I can change how this shape looks. Right now it's a square and as little or big as I make it, it's always going to be a square until you hit the unlock. So I'm going to unlock it and then I want my earrings to be just really long and skinny. I'm going to go up to my size area and I'm going to make them about a third of an inch wide. So I'll click 0.33 and then I want to make them four and a half inches long. So I have those dimensions entered. And the first pair I make, I'm just going to make square on the ends. The second pair, I might actually clip this off at an angle. I'm not sure yet. I think I'll go ahead and prepare for both now. Also, I'm going to change this a different color so I can see the detail a little bit better. Okay, so this is my basic earring. So I want to duplicate that. And I'm actually going to duplicate it one more time for my second set. Okay, so here's my earrings. I am actually going to attach those so that when I send it to my maker, they will be this far apart. I don't want them super close together because I want there to be a little bit of leather between them that stays stuck to the mat to hopefully help the leather from sliding around. So I'll click attach on those. If you're familiar with attach, you know what that does. If you're not, it just means that when I send this to my maker, they are going to stay together just like they are there. Now this is my third one <laughs> over here. I can move it wherever I want to. But see, these are going to stay attached together when I send it to my mat. I'm sorry, when I send it to my maker. So on this pair, 
and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can see the details. I want to cut the two ends a little bit at an angle. I think that might lay down just a little bit better. I kind of played around with a piece of paper experimenting with this, so I'm going to try that. So I will click that I want a triangle. I'm going to make my triangle a lot smaller. And really, it wouldn't matter if I clicked a triangle or a square. I'm going to put it where I want it and cut it off the part I don't want. All right, let's see. Okay, so when I slice this, basically, this is like a cookie cutter, and the things behind it will be sliced away, and I will be left with just the bluish purple that you see here. I'm going to have that angle right there. Now you can pick, you can only have two items selected to slice. So I have my triangle and my long rectangle. Select them both and click slice. Now I just find the easiest way to get rid of all the excess because there's three things over here is just pull this away. And then you can select all of those at one time and click on your delete. And they all go away. So I'll go ahead and do the other end this time just to show you I'll use a square. Again it really doesn't matter what shape you use. And I'm going to try to have the angle at about the same angle as above. Okay so I know how we can do that. Let me put this square up here. I'm going to move things down so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I have my square up here. I'm going to turn it until it is pretty much on the exact same angle as what my rectangle is. I can see it's just barely not. That'd be okay, but I'm going to try to make it a little bit better. Okay, so this line right here is the angle I want. Now see if I go down here and I put it here to have the right angle, it's going to cut all this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this vertically and then that bottom angle should be facing up. So now I can just drag it down. So this is now what used to be on the bottom. Drag this up to where I want it. That looks pretty good. Select both items. Click Slice. And then again, you can just move this away. But let me show you. You have the square to get rid of. Okay, so you have three things to get rid of when you do it that way. Now, I'm happy with that, so I'll duplicate it. Again, because I want a little space between the two, I'm going to go ahead and attach those together. The other thing is, I want to cut these at separate times, and so I'm going to change the color so that my computer won't try to send both pairs to the maker at the same time. Now I'm cutting these out of suede, which I've never cut on my maker before. I think I will go ahead, because I think these will lay a little bit better, this is going to be the first pair that I cut, and if I'm really happy with how they lay, I, I won't even cut this pair. So let me go ahead and send this project to the maker. I want to have these cut in this direction. I always put them somewhere on this grid so I know exactly where to put my leather. In this case I'm going to go an inch down and an inch from the right side. I'll go ahead and click continue.
Now, like I said, I've never cut suede before, so I need to see what the options are. So you click on Browse All Materials and then type the word suede. Okay, so there's faux suede, there's Cricut brand. This little C over here means that there's a Cricut brand faux suede. And then here is suede. So I'm going to just trust them and go with that. So we have the material set to suede. Right now the pressure's on default. If I cut these once and I find that I need to increase my pressure, maybe the blade didn't go all the way through, or decrease it, maybe it went all the way through and it's really cutting into my mat, then I can adjust my pressure right here, more default or less. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it is telling me I need to put my motor, <laughs> my rotary blade in, which I'm, I'm not sure I've ever used my rotary blade. I think I might have played around with it a little bit. So I'll grab that. I'll turn the camera angle around, and we'll keep going. Now the first thing to notice is I'm using a strong grip mat. You want to use your strong grip mat when you're cutting leather. And I do not want to put my leather directly onto my strong grip mat. So I'm going to use some strong grip transfer tape. So let me go ahead and cut that out. Then I had my earrings being cut from side to side, so I'll place this under where my leather will be. You might recall that I had my leather, I had my design starting an inch from the right and an inch from the top. So we'll go ahead and place that there. This is sticky side up so that the sticky side holds on to the leather. Okay, so I was having a really hard time, so I just went ahead and lifted a corner. I'll put this back down, making sure that I don't let my backing adhere back down to the transfer tape. Now, this might lift up a little bit, but once you put your leather on it, you can use your brayer and really stick it down. Okay, so I feel like, and if you see this, I got a new iron and I burned myself. I feel like this is the nice side, so I want this. Hmm, well with the rotary blade, I'm not sure if I want that down or up, to be honest. I'm going to put it nice side up. I'm going to try that. Okay, so I want a little extra on the top and the side and the bottom all around it that I can tape down. I don't want my blade to have to cut through the tape. This is just super hold scotch tape. You could also use the Strong Grip Cricut transfer tape. That's what I used to use. But it's expensive and it's to me a lot harder to work with than just a roll of super sticky scotch tape or super hold scotch tape. So that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so the second thing is that I need to change out my blade to my rotary blade. So I'll take my fine point blade out. And that's my knife blade. Okay, here's my rotary blade. Now, like I said, I think this is the first time I've actually used it for a real project. When I got my maker, I feel like I might have played around with it a little bit, but I am really excited to try this. So you just drop it into the holder. There is a flat side. I have that against the back of the holder. And I guess it's just that easy. We shall see. Mm. 
Okay, let's go ahead and load this. Hopefully everything is stuck down really, really well. All right, let's try it out. Let's just go ahead and unload it. Okay, I want to leave my fabric here because I have a ton of space where I could cut another pair right here. So I'm just going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to try to pop that leather up and grab it. It might be hard to get off the backing. Okay, I feel like, oh my goodness, what a mess. I should have sent that back for a second cut, but I wanted to know, so lesson learned. We're going to recut these, but I'm going to move my design down. I'll cancel my cut. Okay, so I moved my design down so that I can use some of this uncut fabric. Then I click continue. Now this time, I'm still gonna select suede, but I'm going to say I want more pressure. Okay, so I went ahead and said I wanted more pressure than just the default pressure for suede. So let's try this one. Okay, so let's see if adding more pressure was helpful. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but look at how much, how many fibers were left on my mat. Next time I'll know, make sure I put more backing down. Okay, so let's see what we get here. I don't like the fact that the earrings didn't stay stuck down to the backing. To me, that indicates it probably wasn't a great cut. Okay, that could be why though. The backing's on the back, so that's holding it all together. Okay, it still did not cut all the way through. On my second cut, it cut all the way through in areas, but not everywhere. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try this again, but this time I'm going to use a knife blade. So I am setting this to cut again. And when I'm browsing materials, I'm going to just type in leather. And I have several options. Usually I just select genuine leather. In this case, I think I'm going to need something with a lot more pressure. So I'm going to select garment leather, four to five ounce. And then I'm going to see if that tells me to use my knife blade. Yes, it does. Okay, it tells me to load my knife blade. Hopefully I don't cut through my mat with this. We shall see. That's something I need to know though, so I'll change out to my knife blade. Now the knife blade looks similar. It has a similar uh, top to it as the rotary blade did, but it has this really very, very long, sharp knife that sticks out of it. Hopefully you can see. Let me put this behind it. There, see how long that sticks out or how far that sticks out? It sticks out a lot 
further farther than the deep cut Okay, so I'll go ahead and load that into its holder. Send my fabric in. I do need to make sure my star wheels don't go over this, and they don't. So let's try the knife blade. Okay, so something popped up on my screen now that says looks good and then it says unload the mat or cut more. And if you want to cut more, you click on this C. I'm going to try it the way it is. Now that looks promising. You can definitely see the cut lines really well. Unfortunately, that did not cut all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way up to tooling leather. Tooling leather is firmer, and I'm going to select this 2.4 millimeter thick. Again, it tells me to use the knife blade. I do want to check to see if it's clean, and it's not clean. So let me show you why you clean this all the time. Hopefully you can see those fibers that are hanging on that. Uh, there they, whoops, there they went. Okay, so I've cleaned that blade off. So this was the tooling leather two point something. It was 2.4 millimeter. <laughs> Six to seven ounce. Hopefully it'll cut through this. This is the, I think, the highest leather setting they have. So let's see. Okay, so that did 16 passes. Hopefully it didn't cut into my mat too much, but I did want to see how well it cut. Okay, that looks very promising. There is a whole lot of suede fibers that just <laughs> fell off that. Okay, so the tape is still on the back, so that's probably holding it all together, but that's what I thought the first time I cut these. Okay, so that setting did work. I need to get the back off of these. Now here's what we're left with. We're left with the two pieces of leather. And what I want to do is, well, there's two ways I could do it. I could fold these earrings up so that the top is flat. And that's cute. That's what that would look like. Now these do need some cleaning up. So to do that, you have your pointed ends at the top. And then you just pull them up like that. Or I could have my pointed ends at the bottom, and in this case, this is what I 
for saw doing. Then I would have the point at the top and your earrings would hang like this. See if I can hold that down with that so you can see that. Okay, so those are our two options, pointed on the top or flip it over and the second option flat on the top. That makes your earring go a little bit more round. I don't want that. I want mine to be pointed on the bottom and then they just layer over. This layers over that side and that's why I cut it on an angle. If I hadn't I would have had to go a little bit more like that and your earring would be more round than oblong. So that's what I want. So I'm going to use this hole punch and I have it set on the smallest smallest hole that it has. If you're going to err on them not being exactly lined up, err on this top one being a little bit further over the bottom one unless you want the bottom one to show, which I don't. And then on these you can't get super close to the top. I like to not have to use jump rings. In this case I'm going to have to put my hole further down and use a jump ring because they are so pointed. So I'm going to lay my punch tool down onto my suede. Hopefully you can see a little bit of detail on that. Then I'm going to pull it close to me so I can really check it out, make sure it's where I want it. So I'm going to go with it right here and then you just squeeze and it punches holes through. Now I want mine to stay like that. I don't want it to really move around at all. So I'm just going to squeeze a tiny bit of this E6000 onto it. I bought this at Walmart. You could either get a larger tube or you could get multiple smaller tubes and I thought the multiple smaller tubes would be good. So I'm just going to put a dot down below the hole where it won't show. Place my earring where I want it. And then squeeze down. And I can see some coming through. So I'm going to grab a toothpick real quick. So I can clean that out so it doesn't harden in there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just poke that on through and it just knocked the excess that was in the hole right off. Now I want to squeeze down just a little bit more and let that set. Okay, so with the pointy sides up, that's wrong. So I want pointed sides down. And these look pretty close to the same front and back. They do need cleaned up some, but this really was more of an experiment on <laughs> cutting suede than getting them cleaned up perfectly and it's going to be a long video already. So I'm going to go ahead and fold those up. And there's what it looks like. Put my hole punch on where I think I want it. So again, you hopefully can see how that works. You just place it down where you want the hole to be. Okay, so I have it where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. So you just squeeze and you can hear it cut right through that. So 
So I'll do another little blob, hopefully smaller than the last one I did, and not have to knock it out. But if I do, it's really not a big deal. Line the holes up and then squeeze it together. And I'd keep pressure on it for a few seconds just to make sure it has a really good, tight connection that it adheres together well. And that will dry and cure over time. Okay, so there's my two earrings. They're really cute, but wow, it took a lot of adjusting on the Cricut to figure out what to do. So I have my jump ring and my fish hook. Now I think these are eight millimeter jump rings. They have to be pretty big with this point at the top. You just need a pretty large jump ring. Otherwise it's going to be off to the side and I really don't want that. So I'm going to take one of my pairs of needle nose pliers. You need to find the opening and the opening is at the top. I like to have my opening right at the top. And then this is a jump ring tool. It has four sizes of slits in it. I like to find the smallest slit that'll fit. And then what you do is you just twist this to open. And boy, this metal twists very nicely, very easily. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this just in one step instead of opening the little loop on my fish hook and opening the loop on my jump ring. I'm going to place just my fish hook on to my jump ring. And then I always struggle with making sure that I have it facing the right way, but I think this is the right way. So it's easy to fix if it's not. And before you close it up, you want to make sure it is the right way. So just place that on there. Okay. I skipped a step. Since you're only using one jump ring, this loop is facing the wrong direction. If you left it like this, your earring would hang sideways, or you'd have to add another jump ring, which I could do. I could have the big jump ring, a little bitty jump ring, and then this, but I don't want that. So I'm going to take this loop. I'm going to hold on to my earring, and I'm going to twist it 90 degrees. Okay, so now that opening is side to side instead of front to back. Again, if you don't like doing it this way, just add another little bitty jump ring. It's not a big deal. So then to close it back, just hold one side of your jump ring. Put your jump tool back over it, and then I'm just gonna twist it back so that it's closed. And they say you should always twist your jump rings to the side. You should never open them up like you would open like a clam. You wanna open it going to the side. And that <laughs> and I put it on backwards. Goodness sakes. Alrighty. I do that. I don't know why I can't figure out the right way. So I need to find the opening. And really this metal was soft. I can literally do it with my fingers and that's probably even easier than the jump ring tool. I'm just gonna pull my leather off, turn it around, and place it back on. And then twist it back shut. Okay. 
There we go. That's really cute. So it took me a long time, and I'm not sure I'd make these all that often because this suede is just not nearly as easy to work with as leather. But it is cute. So I'll go ahead and finish up the second one. I'll just fast forward through it. And then I'll show you a picture of them at the end. 